Welcome to the Old Souls and Seekers podcast brought to you by Satori Prime. If you're anything like us, you've been around and around the personal development and mindset block quite a few times. You've read the books, watched the videos, attended the seminars, and even worked with a coach or two, and yet you still find yourself searching for more. You may even feel stuck or that you should be farther along than where you are right now. And after doing over a decade of mindset work, we've come to this realization. Mindset work is like a small hit of dopamine that distracts you from your true work. You get these little hits of feeling better only to be met with the same underlying conditions and patterns over and over again. Now mindset was an important part of your evolution as well as ours, but it hits a plateau and now you find yourself ready for that deeper layer of growth and expansion. If you're listening to this podcast, then you're ready to get off that Ferris wheel. This podcast is only for those that are ready to dive deep and do the real inner healing work. For those that are ready to move past more information into actual experiences. If you're looking for more understanding, then you've come to the wrong place. This is a home for old souls ready to fully embrace and remember who they truly are. Ready to make a profound difference in their lives and in the lives of others. So welcome home, dear one. We're excited to be part of your journey. All right. Well, we wanted to have a conversation today about uh, instant gratification and how it's... I personally believe... I was actually just talking to someone earlier today. I personally believe that this is one of the... And, and this is the conversation we had back and forth, like whether it's a cultural thing, a societal thing, like a now thing... And did people actually live this way, you know, thousands of years ago? And we can kind of explore that, but let, let me just kind of create the context for the conversation. Um, something that I've noticed, and you guys can even check in with yourselves and see if this is a reality for you, is this incessant need for people to have the answer right away, to have the quick fix, to find this like magical potion formula, you know, save me attitude. And it needs to happen yesterday. And what I said to this guy was, I feel like the world of patience and allowing and people really up to mastering something has really fallen by the wayside. Uh, and I see it all the time. So Fanny and I just celebrated our uh, 13 year anniversary yesterday. And I met, um, there was a couple that when I had met Fanny, I basically had mentioned that this was like, it was like my parents and this other couple were my role models. It was like when I looked around at relationships, most people's relationships were kind of shitty, even when I was a kid. Our parents had an amazing relationship, but like none of my friends' parents had good relationships. Um, and so I didn't have a lot of, you know, great role models when it came to that world. And so anyway, this, this one couple, uh, who I just recently reconnected with, uh, got divorced and I had no idea. And I was like, holy crap, you know, and, and I'm kind of getting to that age, I guess. And I don't know if it's for you guys too, but kind of getting to that age where like people are getting divorced, you know, and not that they've been married for one or two years, like they've been married for, you know, seven, 10, 13, whatever years. And calling it quits. And the conversation I was having with this guy was about how relationships, especially, but I, I you can ping it onto uh, health or business as well. But in relationships, it's like we're constantly being provided with opportunities to grow and to learn uh, both as individuals, like the individual in the relationship. And then as the collective you know, uh, whether it's a relationship, the family, et cetera. And I just find it strange that people don't take those opportunities. Like they would much rather hit the road, hit a reset button, uh, leave, find someone new only to inevitably, because they didn't really learn the lesson, you know, end up basically dating or marrying the exact same person all over again. And then going, how did I end up back here? And that's, you know, primarily because when the lesson came, I think most people are just uncomfortable with looking at themselves, 
uncomfortable looking within. It's a lot easier to blame the circumstance, the other person, et cetera. And um, in doing that, we don't give ourselves enough patience to kind of be in the struggle and maybe not necessarily see it as the struggle, but see it as an opportunity. And I have never met, never, ever, ever met a relationship where people have been married for, you know, a long period of time that haven't gone through absolute turmoil inside the relationship. Like, I mean, I'm saying like foundational shaking, uh, circumstances that they've been hit with that have they've had to kind of like work through together. Uh, I've never met any person that has a successful business that hasn't thought that they or the business would die multiple times that haven't had money stolen from them that haven't made horrible investments, like never met one of those people. And I've never met anyone that hasn't had, uh, you know, struggles around health that has become healthy, right? It's like everyone, it doesn't matter where you're at, life is not this linear kind of like up and up and up thing. It's there's always opportunities as I guess we see them, but for most people, it's like, uh, the buildings on fire and they run the fuck out, you know, like they don't even try to put the fires out or anything. Yeah. I mean, you hit on a lot of different things here. Um, I, I find even that in general people, what you see on the outside is the exact opposite of what's on the inside, right? Like wherever a person has mastery in their life, is that they, they, they're interested about that because there's a problem they're trying to solve, whether it's, you know, IBS or high levels of anxiety or whatever it might be, right? Like they're, they know a lot about something because they're dealing with those things. Like my most peaceful and successful friends will regularly report like how much anxiety they, they live with or like mm. uh, have bursts where they walk down the street and suddenly have these intense panic, like, like feelings of panic that don't really make any sense. Like, you know, they're they're working on trying to figure out why that's happening in their bodies. And sure. The, like disorder comes in so many ways. Like you said, we're, we're at this age, like I'm also at this age, like one of our best friends right now are going through a separation um, also. And, but you know, again, people fall in different buckets. I think it's, a, I'll push back a little bit on what you said. Um, like they did a lot of work together over the period of time. Like they, they, they just struggled as a couple from kind of the beginning. Um, and I will, really say they really tried and it wasn't like just talk therapy. It was landmark and Tony Robbins and IFS. Like they did lots and lots and lots of things and, and made headway and, and probably grew significantly as people ultimately, ultimately realized they're just not really cohesive together. Yeah. Um, and who knows, you know, like who knows what their future really looks like, but they're two very dedicated people to their growth and time will tell. So it's not definitely not one size fits all. And I'm also, we're also kind of at that age where like I'm, I'm, seeing how people get sick in different ways and their kids get sick in different ways and things that people really deal with. And it's, it's challenging, man. Like, you know, I won't go into a really sad story that's around us right now, but uh, a kid in uh, Jaden school got very, very sick and has been in the hospital basically for um, almost three and a half straight weeks with four blood transfusions. And I won't talk about exactly what's happening with him, but it's a horror story for those parents, you know, as bad as yeah. intense a situation as I can imagine. Uh, but to your point, um, going oh, hold on, like look, just, just, just on that for a second here, like yeah. that's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about, right? Like that either it, it's the kind of thing that, uh, is either going to rip a family apart or bring a family together. And I think that's the perspective of it. It's like, again, I've, we've been watching that nine perfect strangers and there's like a very similar type of situation in there. And it's like they do a really good job of, of showing you kind of the, the way that people deal with that level of sadness or grief or hardship. You know, like when Fanny and I, when we lost everything and our house was being foreclosed on and Fanny was pregnant. And for those that don't know, like, because of my way of being and like, I always figure shit out and make it happen. I didn't mention to my wife that I wasn't paying the mortgage. So when our house, we like got served papers that was after nearly a year of me not paying our mortgage. Fanny had no idea. Right. And so when I turned around, knowing that at this point I'm outed and like, I need to go tell my wife that I lied to her for the last year. And because of that, we're in this predicament, right? That was all because of like my patterns and protectors and strategies and all that stuff. But it was like, that was such 
a pivotal moment in our relationship. Fanny could have easily been, and I know how she is about lying. Like that was her number one thing. Don't lie. That could have been the end easily. And yesterday we were talking at, she was like, you know, it's moments like that, that made us stronger as a couple. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to throw I, that in there. I, I often think of you, um, you know, I, I'm, I, I just passed my three year anniversary. There's a lot of threes. My son's turning three. You just had a 13th year anniversary. We just had our, or he's having his third birthday. We're having our third year anniversary. Our, our anniversary is 10 days within his, um, uh, birthday. So very close. But, um, I think of you often because I remember the the moral of that story is like you learn partnership, right? Like it, yeah. like being married is one thing. Learning partnership is a, is a whole other thing. Like one is a ceremony that we go through and the other one is uh, lessons that we learn along the way. And I think like, uh, like I've been married for, for those three years and I'm like, it's been a transition psychologically, emotionally, uh, pressure. Like a lot of the stuff I'm going through today is like, if I was single and going through these circumstances I'm in today, like, whatever, like, you know, worst comes to worst, I go be a monk in like Tibet for two years. Like it's, that was always an option for me, you know, but today that I don't have those outs. Right. So, um, I think that pressure as a, as a man and many men, I'm sure feel this to like provide and take care. Like we're hunters and today hunting is money. So yeah. you know, like basically for creating that stability in the family. Um, yeah, but you know, to, to, to kind of go back to the main point here, instant gratification can be really useful when you're patient about looking about what arises as you would try to fulfill that gratification. If you're, if you're uninterested in what's creating that necessity to solve something so quickly, then that's really the point you're missing. Just like in the relationships, right? Some people will learn, some people won't. Some people will just continue to try to consume and satisfy this urge inside, never really noticing that it's never quite really being satisfied following one addiction to the next. Uh, I think those of us who are learning to get more into the uh, advanced technology of the hum of human nature, let's say this this open awareness that we can be in, this objective awareness that we can learn to sit inside of, then instant gratification is really useful when you notice what's arising in the system as the need for instant gratification arises. And then ironically, this subdues instant gratification and actually unhooks you from many, if not all of the addictions that instant gratification really is. Cause that's all gratification points to is a, a need in the system that's yeah. instead of being dealt with is being dealt with through an addiction. And so it never, that gratification never gets resolved because it's always, I mean, we talk about this a bazillion times, but it's like, it is the internal game and instant gratification is a way of like not noticing that there's a subtle sensation in your body and then trying to get that fulfilled in the outside world by clicking a button. And of course, by their own admission, you know, like Google and Facebook and social media companies have created systems that are literally designed to addict your brain to spending as much time as possible. I actually watched a really interesting documentary on social media and search engines um, yesterday. And I don't think it's really done with nefarious purposes. It's just it's, you know, tech companies that are, come from really altruist, altruistic beginnings that evolve into tech giant companies that ultimately you know, their main principle is not to serve people, but to make money. Uh, and so we're kind of, you know, dealing with that, but that's true in every human being too, right? We all start with great intentions and then it matures and evolves into something that doesn't, when no one's paying attention, little by little, the needle moves until it becomes something that's uh, consumed your life or taking over or really distracting or creating disorder in your, in your life. And like the way the way, way back, so to speak, to a more balanced place is, is it's the simplest thing in the world. And it's just not easy to do again, like to use Elon uses this analogy. I'm reading this, uh, incredible book by this, um, very knowledgeable Yogi, um, teacher Yogi. And, uh, again, uses that kind of analogy of walking up the mountain. He's like, you know, every day you just got to walk when you make the summit, nobody really knows, but if you never take those steps, you're never going to get closer to the summit. And, and it, I will say this, like the thing that makes the difference is not the pop, is not the instant aha, is not the, okay, I understand that now. It's your dedication to yeah. having a continuous and daily practice in your life. And, and I don't give a shit what you're doing in your life. If you don't continue that practice, you're simply not going to get better at it. Um, 
my wife and I, for our anniversary, went up to Ojai, California to um, stay at this really ritzy resort that we would normally never go to, but it was um, this opportunity to go there. So we did. And one of the things that you can do, it's this really huge property and Ojai is beautiful for anyone who's ever been there. That you know how special it is. And they had these like 1940s um, bicycles that you can take out and rent for free and ride around with your cute little bell and your cute little basket. And um, when you're an adult, you forget how freeing riding, getting on a bicycle is. Like even as an adult, it's just as exciting. Like if you haven't been on a bicycle in a while, you get on, you're like, oh my God, this is just, yeah. there's just such a special feeling to being on a bicycle. Like, and if you do it all the time, you kind of forget. But if you don't, you like, you get on and immediately like the world opens up to you. I, you know, everyone knows that, but at 38 years old, I got on, and I was like, Wee! You know, like it, it, was so fun. it was so fun. But, and my wife hadn't been on a bicycle in, I don't know, 15 years. She used to go mountain biking, but she just hasn't been on one in a while. And you truly never forget how to ride, but she, again, she hasn't done that as a continuous practice. We got to this like little hill that had this like lip and she barreled her body into the metal gate. And like, I, I'm not joking. She, she got injured. Like you do when you're seven, just like ripped off all the skin on her knuckles, like giant bruise, like on her hip, um, cut her shoulder. I mean, it was, you know, thank God it didn't hit her head or anything like that. And she's, she's, she's recovering pretty nicely, but like that, that is expected when someone's not a continuous practice, you're like, you have an illusion of confidence in something that you really don't know because you're really not doing that every day. There's there in every practice. We just said this on a, an event we ran this past weekend. It's like when you practice something into mastery, then there are subtleties that only somebody who's practicing that way will ever notice, know about, learn from and just make them that extra special. I mean, how many people play the guitar, but why is it when Santana picks up the guitar, he can make it make a sound that's subtly different than everything else you've ever heard. And it makes you pay attention. Like, wow, that's something I've never heard before. Uh, Rodrigo Gabriela come to mind, right. As amazing guitarists that have this very special thing that they do. And so like, that's it, you know, it's, it's the subtle world is everything that matters. And, and, instant gratification moves you away from that, but could also be an indicator of how to pay attention to that as well. Yeah. I, um, you were talking about habits and, and I wrote this down. It's like, I think you and I, there's an amazing book, by the way. Uh, we haven't mentioned it in a long time, actually called mastery by Robert green. Beautiful book. Like honestly, beautiful book. Amazing. He tracks probably time for me to reread that book, to be honest. Yeah. Be beautiful. How he uh, tracks all these amazing, uh, could be scientists, musicians, athletes, et cetera, and gives you like the real world story of how they got to be the greatest. And it, it just completely eradicates this notion that they were born more talented or geniuses or anything. It just goes to show like they just worked harder for a longer period of time than anybody else. And it didn't matter what arena he delved in. It was that. And so something, as you were talking about habits, I think that you and I have gotten very, very good at is we never do a task or a habit, whether it's like a new meditation, whether it's reading, whether it's a new program, whatever it is, the intention is never for the result. Like, like we we've removed ourselves from this place of like, I'm going to do this meditation in order to feel X, Y, and Z, right? Like we just do it because we know that in the doing and in the habitual practice, things consistently open up. And I can't say it's this did that or that did that. It's this holistic thing. You know, the fact that I eat the way that I do and exercise the way that I do and, uh, interact with my kids the way that I do and with our clients, the way that I do and with guy, and like all of it is feeding to whatever wants to arise. And I think one of the biggest mistakes people make is they do things with an agenda of having some sort of result. And when we tell people like they come to our two day live event, I'm like, listen, if you come here with this expectation, you're going to be disappointed. And it's not because you've chosen to be disappointed. It's just how the human mind works. It's like anytime you have an expectation and that expectation is unmet, that's going to lead you to an upset period. I don't give a shit who you are and how spiritually inclined you are. 
the level to which your disappointment is or the level to which your sadness is, is dependent on where your expectation was and where reality met that. So the bigger that gap, the more upset there's going to be. Right. So when people like and they've tracked this happiness, happiness, the, the, the chemical reaction of happy is simply this an expectation met. That's it. That's happy. And, and there's a this is not like woo woo shit. This is science tracked. Like there's chemicals that fire in the brain when your expectation is met. If something exceeds your expectation, you're elated. Lifer. You're just elated. Lifer. That's it. Right. So just notice that. So how many times are your expectations? Uh, I just lost the word like like surpassed. Right. Yeah. Very, very few. Very few times. If ever. If ever. I mean, like there, very, there very, are very few times. moments in life that come along that are like yeah. beyond what you really expected. Yeah. Maybe you showed up to a restaurant and like blew your mind. Maybe you went on a vacation to a place that you thought was going to be a dump and all of a sudden it's fantastic. Maybe you showed up at the airport and like they gave you a first class seat for free. Like that's the kind of shit that you're like, oh my God. Meeting but yourself. that is so far and few. Yeah. And so if we go and we're doing practices, for example, that, that, we're teaching our clients. If, if you're constantly doing a meditation with the intention of like, why don't I feel better? 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 Why you said this is going to make me feel better. I'm like, I don't know how much time it's going to take you to do this practice, to have this stuff be released. I don't. Right. It's like, it's, it's, it's the allowing for the process. However, we do know with continued practice, not, not feeling, not just feeling better. I mean, I think that's a natural byproduct of it, but I wouldn't point someone at that as the, like, here's the goal. It's like, you're cultivating awareness. What ends up happening with a, when you cultivate awareness is here's the byproducts that 99.9% .9 of people experience, which is freedom from suffering, more well-being, more peace, better connected relationships, more health in their bodies, usually more spontaneity and like synchronistic uh, things entering their lives, more abundance. Like I would say those are all pretty good side effects, right? Like we can't yeah, guarantee it. Like, yeah, but that's just what happens. You know, like, like for me, it's like we humans have like all the wrong education and everything that really matters in life. Right. Like I would say to me, spirit, spirituality is, is probably first on my plate. Uh, quality of my relationships is probably second uh, to me than like health education. Like how do I preserve get longevity in my body. Um, and fourth would be like understanding money systems, proper investing, which I'm really late to the game on. I, I really wish that that was more of a focus in my early twenties, but like most people don't get that education because they're going through college and trying to get a job. And like, unless you grew up with parents who had that education and pass that down to you and taught you like how a fiat system works and how devaluation of money works and why keeping money in a bank account is the dumbest fucking thing on planet earth. Um, you know, like you just don't know those things, but like that, that's all these things that if I look at my life, um, you know, we were at, at a birthday party, the guy that's getting a separation yesterday and he said, and he's highly successful, very, very smart individual. And he said, look, I, I look now and he's, I think he's at my age or one year older. He's like, I look at how much time has passed in my life and it just blows my mind that I know that I have at least that much more time to go and I get to do it from here. Like I get to springboard from where I'm at. He's like, I, he's like, it boggles my mind what's really possible in my life that there's like, there's been so much life already and I still have that much more to go, you know? And again, anything could happen, but you know, he's, he's living into the future of having a, a long life. And I think that's, that's what's critical. It's like, okay, if, if you agree with me at any level about one or all four of those places, like you want to be investing, if not every day, a few times a week, some of your time in, in taking another step in the wisdom that you're collecting about that area of life. Now, it's not all going to come at once, but like, where are you going to be three, four, five years from now, where you're going to be able to make better decisions, come from a peaceful place, um, you know, and just re really be in alignment with vast array of wisdom. Like I, I was told when we first got into the, like uh, the business world, like don't be a jack of all trades. And I think over the last decade, that's actually flipped. I think today, like be a jack of all trades, be, be really knowledgeable in a lot of different areas because there was a lot of systems of support before that let people be lazy in areas like finance, you know, social security blankets and, and whatnot. And like all that stuff is gone. Like my generation is not going to have, 
any of that at all, right? So it's like, if you're not going to take the reins on those things and and understand and put yourselves in good positions with that, but like, of course I want to make a million, like millions of dollars tomorrow. That's the instant gratification, but the slow and steady is really what's going to be able to not just set myself up to be wealthy, but to hopefully set my children up, you know, to have lots of money to invest in things that really matter to them with, with their own education or businesses that they want to create. And that would be like, my biggest heart's desire is to set them up to have those opportunities instead of having to work so hard to get started. Yeah. yeah. I, I think uh, ultimately it, it just keeps coming back down to this. It's like, if you're doing things from that place of wanting the quick fix or the quick result, you're just missing it. And, and even the times that we used to call this in um, when we were training people to uh, build programs online, and uh, build businesses online, sorry. We called it the kiss of death. Like when someone put out their first thousand dollars in marketing and ended up making, you know, like a $10,000 or a $20,000 commission or whatever it was, we literally called it the kiss of death. We did. Because now for that first thousand, they got, it was just stupid dumb luck. Like they didn't know shit of what they were doing and they got this huge reward. So now it's like, oh, I know something, right? I got this. And then it's just now they go through the cycle where everyone starts, which is like the learning curve and the learning curve kicks your ass, right? Like you lose a lot more money in the beginning than you're making and it just takes time. So it's the same with everything else. I just feel like nothing that you've ever had a, um, a quick win in tends to last. It's like, it, it just takes time and discipline and guy kind of, mentioned it, but it's definitely worth re-mentioning. You know, one of the things that our clients come here to do work on is to understand not from their mind, but understand from internally the, how the body is creating that tension or that discomfort that leads to the mind saying, I need to fix this fast. And whatever that is for you, it doesn't matter. You probably just, if you haven't done this work, you might just not be aware that that is occurring, but you know exactly the strategy that you have to numb yourself of whatever the sensation is. Some people lean on food, some people alcohol, some people smoke, some people pills, some people sex, some people exercise, some people work, whatever your thing is, you do it all the time, right? It's, it's, it's like a, it's like the brain yelling at you like, soothe me, soothe me, soothe me. And you go and you do that thing and you sue them. So until you go down and actually figure out what is that thing that is creating the discomfort. And that would be a worthwhile investigation. And that's not something that you're going to figure out overnight. And that's not something that you're going to heal overnight. A question is always to everyone I talk to is like, how much longer are you going to plan on living? Right? Is it? 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, like how much more time you think you got here on earth? Would it be worth to even, if you're living 50 years, let's say, would it be worth to invest 10% of that time? So five years, even if you invested five years and saw no return on that investment, like none, you just did the practice, you just did the practice, you just did the practice for five years. By the way, it won't ever take that long, but I'm just saying like, you just did it. Because you're like, I want the other 45 years of my life to be completely different. I want to experience peace. I want to experience joy. I want to experience connection. I want to experience love. I don't want to have to be like contorted and contracted and, you know, easing this through medication of whatever sort. Like, is that worth your time and energy investment? To us, it's like a no brainer. Plus, a, it doesn't take that long. So, you know, it's a, it's a investment really of a few months to a year to get grounded in these tools so that you can really, really exponentially go from there. And the other thing is like, once you start going down this path, the return on your investment is so compounded that guy and I, after having done this work for years today, like what, and, and Alex, who's here actually just messaged us in our other group. She's one of our higher end coaching programs. She was like, I do the minis today and I can't believe how much more I'm feeling. And she's been in this practice for, you know, 
six months yeah. or whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. It's like now it just keeps opening up and unfolding and allowing and, and it leaves you breathless because you're like, wow, I cannot believe how much more this work impacts me today than it did when I first started. And that's, it's just so beautiful. There's, there's like a ever increasing in sensitivity, you know, like I, I would say even be between us, like we've have been having conversations recently that I know in the past would have been really like a lot of tension would have been there. It would have been this like kind of scuffle between us. So like even the, the conversation we had yesterday without going into too much detail, I was like, that was easy. You know, like just uh, everything that's so much ease and flow, like that was not how our relationship was for many, many years until probably like three, four years ago, it started yeah. like where the stresses were just started easing. And, you know, uh, there's a few people here in the chat box, but, um, you know, Alex, like what you said, and, and Natalie's talking about, you know, she's had some addictions in her life and stuff like that. But that, that's the whole point. It's like awareness also increases sensitivity. It drops away these, these protectors that we use in our system. And what they're protecting is the sensitivity that's underneath. Our gifts, though, are in this very subtle sensitivity that humans innately have to sense our world in a way that most people have not become accustomed to, right? We've, we were very conditioned to live in our minds. We're very conditioned to rely on our five senses. And in, in Buddhist traditions, they say there are six senses. And the six senses, the sixth sense is the mind. It's this awareness that they're, they're actively developing. And so, like, if you are not developing, you are basically leaving one of your senses. Like, if tomorrow I was like, you got to give up one of your senses. Like, you got to give up touch, or you got to give up smell, or you got to give up listening or sight, or, you know, hearing. Like, would you give up one of those senses? Probably wouldn't, right? Or you'd want, not want to make that choice. However, that is what most people are doing. And, and ironically, it's probably the most important one. You know, most people, it's like, you're not, it's not like you even have one hand tied behind your back. It's like both hands are tied behind your back. And, and so it's a seesaw, like everything else, right? You're going to, it's going to probably uh, massively grow your experience of pleasure in the world. That'll be like 80% of what grows, right? Will be this experience of added pleasure. And then 20% as the sensitivity comes, ultimately kind of what I've had to find out over this five-year period leads to some pretty significant like discomfort in the system. But it's not like, the world is now creating more discomfort in your system. It's the discomfort that you are holding in your body that has not, your, your system has literally not felt relaxed enough to let it go. You guys like think about a muscle that is constantly being stretched, right. And, and worked out. Like it, it never has this opportunity to be like, Oh, yeah. so it never has the opportunity to recover from the tension that's being built up, which allows for it to grow. But like the energy has to move out of that muscle. It has to go into a relaxed state in order for it to rebuild itself. And, and, and ironically, or not so, because everything looks the same at every level of reality. That's kind of how it works with spirituality too. And so like, you know, the systems of support that we, that we create here is in understanding that people are going to go through some very challenging experiences internally. Uh, and we'll need support when that stuff happens. Like we certainly would ad not advocate for people going through that kind of stuff on their own. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't want to go through that on my own. I'm very grateful for all the support systems I've spent many years building and have people to call upon when I'm in those States. And again, like it's very easy. These, these patterns in your system are looking for opportunities to pull back. Humans don't like change and it's not the humans don't like change. It's these parts in our system that are desperately trying to protect you from whatever your conception of reality is. And that's what they know. They know how to protect that version of reality. And so if the reality starts shifting, they're obviously feeling this inadequacy that they can't protect you from this unknown world, right? But if you just step in there and become aware into that unknown world, these parts within you, like everything else within you, learns to evolve quickly and become way more efficient at providing access to a life that you really, really want, right? So it might take a day of discomfort, a week, a month of discomfort, but it's like, you know, would you take that little bit of discomfort, again, sitting in a new way, being aware of it, not reenacting, not looping in it, in order to relieve yourself of a lifetime of addictions or a lifetime of these things that you've done that have created uh, harmful circumstances for yourself and others, um, and, and really, really never have to deal with that again. And, you know, Alex said that our programs surpassed our expectations 
and our programs do. It's like, it, honestly, I, I'm not saying this from an egotistical place. Will probably be for most people one of those experiences that they're like, wow, that's far beyond anything that I comprehend, like kind of understood or known was possible. And it's not for any other reason than it's like novelty does that, right? Like, why is a child so excited all the time? The world is novel, right? And it's beautiful for them, and everything's a fun experience. But the journey within for most people is still a huge novelty. Like they don't even know the capacity they have to go inside of themselves and like uncover these incredibly deep wisdom truths that are like the nature of the universe yeah. can be discovered from within their system. That is pretty fucking exciting if you ask me, right? So like the thing is like, there's no end to that depth. There's no end to that evolution for us. So if you go this route, like you start living a life that's very novel, like even like walking by a tree or like, reading a book or listening to music can once again become a novel experience because you're no longer listening to it from these five senses that you've become so accustomed to. You start watching life arise from awareness itself. And there's all these other subtle experiences that you can begin having. So like the sensitivity where at, at first can be like, Oh shit, you know, yeah, there's those moments for sure. Like, Oh, I don't want to feel this much. I didn't know I was going to feel this much on the opposite spectrum. It's like, wow, look how much I'm feeling. Look how much I'm discerning from this experience. Look how much love I'm feeling in this moment with my spouse. Look how this music is moving me to tears or to move in ways that I wouldn't have wanted to before. Look how this is naturally guiding me towards things that I was afraid of and I no longer am because I just want to experience them so much. And there's just so much of this beauty that can that can happen here. And for me, it's just like the world just keeps opening up. Yeah. Um, you know, Natalie was saying connecting with people is the hardest on this path. Forming relationships is terrifying. And all of me wants the comfort of being alone. And I would just offer that uh, going within and, and getting to this part of us that's sensitive um, can be scary, right? Because the, the way that most of us has, have done it is on our own. And I find that personal development puts a lot of people on an island. You know, we read the books by ourselves. We watch the videos by ourselves. Yeah, you may have a friend or two that you can kind of talk and extrapolate these things, but there's no one there to hold you as you're going through that depth. And the mind doesn't want to take you there. Never wants to take you there. And so what, what gets to be uncovered is like all these protection mechanisms that we have created for decades that stop us from actually being able to feel those sensitive parts. The sensitive parts, you don't want to feel. And so it makes sense that this work can be scary to people and, and puts people off. And, and then people end up staying in a world of comfort, which is a world of getting more information and acquiring more insights and these little aha moments, right? It's like just enough of that breadcrumb to keep you excited and going. And it, it never quite gets to the heart or the core of what these things are. And so what Natalie, I know, and, and Alex, who's here, like what they're experiencing is that when you do this inside of a community, it's profound. It's almost like you don't have to do nearly as much so that your spiritual path and personal development path becomes way more effortless and way more in this world of being, which I'm sure you've all read about, but it's like, how the fuck do I just be, you know? Um, so there's definitely something to that as well, which is, you know, it's going to take something for, for you to say yes and, and actually deep dive and do this kind of work. It absolutely takes a tremendous amount of courage. It actually, like once you're in it, it's not that scary. Uh, but the initial, like, I'm going to jump off this cliff and, and trust uh, that that piece can be can be quite scary. Yeah, look, it's like anything new. If you go to the gym, you don't, you can't, you know, like I remember like when I first started lifting, like you can't even feel the muscle groups that you're trying to work, right? There's no, there's no awareness at all. And so your arms are just moving in weird directions and someone points it out. But like two weeks later, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I know I can, I can kind of feel when I squeeze my traps. I can kind of feel when I squeeze my biceps and, and stuff like that. And, and, and of course, like you're in more pain, right? Cause that muscle is for getting out of atrophy for the first time. It's really sore and 
that, and, and for a lot of people, that's what puts them off. They're like, oh my God, this is what working out is like. Uh, you know, that's, that's not how I feel about it today. I don't, I don't run my body ragged. And like most of what I focus on is dynamic movement, flexibility. How do I recover quickly as I get older? Right. Like I want to, I want to maintain my body and, and have, and have that ability. I don't want to destroy it, which is kind of, kind of the way that you do it in your twenties, but that's how you take on spirituality in your twenties. That's how you do everything when you're young. It's like, like, you know, full force destruction. You don't, you don't know this art of subtlety that you kind of grow into as, as you get a little bit older. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know that there's a more worthwhile endeavor, you know, as a human being to, to uncover these parts. A lot of people don't want to face, don't want to face the realities that they've created for themselves or that they were born into. And some of them are really, really challenging. People are in very challenging circumstances. That's very understandable. However, time and time again, like we've had handfuls of clients that started this work, homeless and broke with crazy addictions. Like you see these people a year later and it's just unimaginable. Unrecognizable. Yeah, unrecognizable how their lives are turning out. And Elon and I are not responsible for that. We just want to say that. Like, we're not responsible for changing the circumstances. We're not responsible for how anything happens in anybody's life. But it's like, you can really see. It's like the inner programs are creating their outer reality. And they are stuck in a loop of their own design. And it's really challenging because when that's the only world you know, anything outside of that is scary. It's like, you know, better know what's like, better to know the, the devil you know than what's yeah, that line? The devil you know is better than the one that you don't. Right, something like that. So it's like, that's the devil you know, right? Even if it's uncomfortable, at least you know that discomfort. When you step out of that and so it's a whole other discomfort, you're like, nope, your parts don't want to deal with that. So again, we can, we can say that that's human nature, but I don't really like that because human nature is this evolving idea all the time. Like humans are constantly evolving into new nature. We can say that uh, there's like parts within you that are very dedicated again to running a specific program, but then it's important also to keep the reality in place so that they can run their programs, what they think is effectively, but what, you know, the parts inside of you have different opinions than, than this, have different opinions than this, have different opinions than this. Like there, there are a lot of different parts of you that have different opinions. Like, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes my butthole has a different opinion than my head. Like it needs to take a shit. <laughs> And, and, and I got, and I want to read a book or like, I want to go do something else. Like there's different opinions happening. Sometimes my heart pulls me in this direction, but my head is really afraid. Right. So it, we are so dynamic and these are just the big ones. Like there's all this subtle nature of sensation and energy happening in your body and everything has its own concern. Like there's a part. And if you just pay attention, like, wow, that part is really concerned right now. Now you might up here be like, I don't know why doesn't matter. It has a concern and it is part of this whole mechanism and it will draw energy, get your attention and take over a part of your life if it's not getting attention. And for most people, these parts are actually running their lives. Just a few are like yeah. just hijacking the system over and over again because unconsciously you gave them permission. You said, please save me. And this part came and said, I will. Whether it's from hard work or becoming a victim or, you know, uh, being the funny person or whatever it might be that you do in your life. Like the act, the, the character you're playing is, is a, is a signal of what part is hijacking the system most often. And that's just one characteristic of you. And um, I don't know if you saw this, but uh, Will Smith did a like kind of a documentary uh, yeah. on his life called uh, best, best shape of my life. Have you seen this? Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, it's, it's worth a watch for sure. Yeah, I heard. And um uh, they're short, they're like 20 minute long episodes, but he's like, you know, he talks about how he was like, I'm a coward underneath all this stuff. And they, they have a clinical psychologist not talking directly to him, but like giving context as he's like uncovering things to stuff that's going on in his life. And she's like, you know, the more, the, the more the entertainer, the more the comedian, like the deeper the trauma in the system, basically. 100%. Right. And, and he lived, you know, he lived in a household with a very militant father who like perfection was demanded he basically told them like either get it done or, or don't like die but this that was like the message he got growing up and you've heard him say that in spiritual times i remember like when he was i am legend he goes i'll jump on a treadmill next to you he goes you know how i know i'll be successful he's like because i'll let you die like i'll die before i get off this thing i know you'll quit before me yeah and and that's been how he's become successful but like 
he writes a mem- he's writing his memoir, like the book release is happening. So I'm sure they did it as a promo for the book, uh, like a long term. And like, you know, at the, the, he gets so beaten down by writing this book because he has to go back to so many emotional times in his life that were so intense. And it's like processing through a system and you get to watch him, you get to watch him do this. And it's, it's beautiful and intense at the same time. But like, again, like that, I say watch that because it reveals to you, like even someone who look, looks like the apex has it all beautiful family, highly intelligent, very funny, always charismatic no different underneath all the surface is dealing with all these same parts and now is starting to come to terms with realizing these parts within a system and realizing he doesn't actually want to be this fucking character jim carrey yeah. same thing you know like it's like i made this character for you all and he's like and i'm stuck in it and i don't want to be this fucking character anymore right yeah. like same thing so it's like the, you know people come to terms with this at different times in their lives yeah it's it's uh, you know when we were doing like a bunch of landmarks work i remember one of the teachers maybe in the communication courses was talking about how every actor or lots of people who are actors, their their running story is like, I'm nobody, which is why they can always be this person and that person and this person and that person. But deep down, like their core thing is like, I'm nobody. Sure. Uh, which makes so much sense. And you're like, yeah, that obviously makes sense. And um, yeah, I'm very excited to see it. I love him a lot. Um, I heard a story that his son... Uh, when he was 15 asked to be emancipated so you know this man who's was at that time the number one actor in the world like grossing actor you know beautiful wife beautiful kids and like his son wants to be emancipated so uh, you can't turn off the human there's no amount of money that you're going to make there's no amount of success that you're going to have that you know he was obviously peak health condition like life is always going to find a way to send you a lesson and rattle you and I think that's, you know, to, to bring this back full circle, like that's what it's all about. It's, are you willing and able to stand in the place of no result, to stand in the place of unknown, to stand in the place of struggle for as long as necessary without trying to wriggle yourself out of it, without trying to make it better, without trying to any of that so that you can fully and all the way through receive the lesson. And there's like, you can't instant gratification your way into these lessons because the bigger the lessons and, and I found like the, the longer we're on their path, right? Like think about what, you know, kind of you've been going through and I've spoken about it before. It's like you get to a place where it takes a lot to knock you off balance, right? In the beginning, it was like a wind can blow in this direction and you're like, ah. And then you get to a place where you, you do feel a lot more stable. And it's like all this other stuff that used to rattle you. I mean, today, for example, like you guys might find this funny, but I'm highly competitive, like highly, highly competitive person. And tennis, I've always said is like my final frontier. And any day that I would walk off a tennis court that I either lost or played poorly would destroy the rest of my day, like destroy the rest of my day. I would just... I would just be here, but like constantly thinking about the shots and how I messed up and what I did wrong. And it was just incessant. And I played awful. Like, I don't remember the last time I actually played as bad as I played today. And I walked off the court and I was driving in the car and I had a smile on my face and I was like, well, and I actually paused. Like it was, I I actually had enough awareness around it to be like, wow, I, I like, it's just not there anymore. You know, am I disappointed? Yeah, I'm disappointed. But like, I just didn't, it didn't roll over into the rest of my day. It like stayed there and I was like, okay, it was that day on a tennis court, you know, tomorrow will be another day and I'll have a whole other experience on a tennis court. So even that for me is a revelation. Well, that's the thing. I just point at something here and that's kind of what I'm learning too. Like the sadness and anger that's in my system and and like here, this disappointment that you've like often lived with it's like when you're when you're aware you're you're aware of it when it's at a one and like anything anything that we don't put attention on is just going to be like you know just kind of expand and grow but if we just like gently place awareness on it it's going to be uh right and you can kind of like bring it back into that balance but if it just festers and grows throughout the day and for me it's the same it's like I've often been like, where was the period of time between when I was felt totally fine and then just like losing it off the rails. But the truth is like, I was already losing it. Uh, My protectors made it, made me look very stoic and calm, 
even though like they're like the jabs have already happened. My system's already in, in a trigger impact. And then like another trigger happens, another trigger happens. And by the time I let it out, it's like, I've been actually holding it in my system in this like docile way. And then it's too much. And I, you know, it's like, I can't maintain that composure and pop. Right. So, um, yeah. So now they're saying it's like a uh, guy, you're feeling way more settled. Um, no, she was asking, are you feeling more settled? Are you feeling more settled? Yeah. Yeah. Much more. And even yesterday, like Yelena and I had a really like big challenge that kind of came up and it was just navigated so smoothly. Like even I walked away. I'm like, if that was two months ago or even a few weeks ago, uh, I mean like rattled for days over stuff like that, you know, just like, Oh my God, what was me? How, like, how are we going to fin- like figure this shit out? And I was like, and I can't tell you that I wasn't feeling anything. Like I was a little bit off, but you know, I was maintaining awareness on it. Woke up today. It's, you know, feeling really stable. So definitely seeing uh, shifts like everybody else, like you, you know, you apply the work and the work works. What can I tell you? And, and I'll just, I, I'll leave it with this because this just came through to share. It's like the worst thing that you can do is compare your journey to someone else. Totally. It, it's, I, I cannot emphasize it's the worst thing you can do is compare yourself to someone else's progress. Here's what you got to get. You're a unique soul that chose this body to land inside of and have this game of life experience. You have no idea, nor does your mind, what this life was supposed to look like. You were supposed to have the parents that you had. You were supposed to have the traumas that you had. You were supposed to have the heartbreaks that you had and the disappointments. Like that was all part of the plan before you even chose to be here. So you're on this path now, right? And you want to create awakening and awareness and all these other things. Amazing. There's some other version of you that didn't choose that. Some other timeline, you did not choose that path. Okay. So you made it here. You chose this path. Let go that there's some way that this is supposed to look for you. There's a divine timing and orchestration to all of it. And if you were to have the breakthrough that you think you want right now, trust me, because we've seen it, it will cause more harm than good. It'll be like all those people that win the lottery and become more broke than before the, before they won the lottery, right? Like that's just how it is. All of this stuff happens with patience, with grace, with practice, and life will reveal itself to you and open that door when that door is ready to be open. Like you can stand there all you want, trying to budget and push it and burn the door down, like all of it. It it won't matter. You're just expelling energy in all the wrong ways. Just like get to that place of equanimity and acceptance of there is what there is and there isn't what there isn't. And I'm, I can find my ground and balance in that. Mm-hmm. It will serve you so, so well. Um, so we'll, we'll put a pin in it there. I want to make uh, a, a few very, very important announcements. So if you've been on our podcast, if you're in our community, um, there's some things that you definitely want to be aware of. So we're coming up the end of the year, the holidays, et cetera. Uh, Guy and I are going to be taking a bit of a hiatus. Uh, We're going to be here and there, but you probably won't be seeing as much of us uh, end of November, December, et cetera. A couple of things that are going to be changing and you really want to become aware of. First, all of our program pricing is going to go up starting January 1st. Okay, so L1 through L3, all the product. Uh, prices are going up. Mindset Mastery, which is the level one program, which is where we recommend everyone starts. It's our walk through the door to this work, right? So it's six week training. You also have a six week live coaching component with that right now is $497. At the beginning of the year, that price we haven't decided yet will be either double that or triple that. So it's going to be somewhere between a thousand to $1,500 starting January 1st. We're letting you know this now so that if you've been sitting on the sidelines and you're like, oh, I kind of think now's your time because you're going to go spend a lot more money, double, if not triple, come January 1st. So do yourself a favor, buy yourself a Christmas or a Hanukkah gift (laughs) and give yourself the gift of peace and love 
and epic relationships and more abundance. And you can do that. We don't accept everyone into the programs anymore at all. You have to apply for every one of our programs now. So you can go to soul soulsandseekers.com forward slash apply soulsandseekers.com forward slash apply. Uh, it'll take you to an application. You'll get on a quick call with uh, one of our coaches. They'll ask you a few questions and they'll really let you know, like, this is the right program for you or it's not. It might just, you might just not be ready yet for a program like this. In any event, uh, you can still grab it right now for the 497 bucks. Otherwise it will go up. Okay. Um, that's one. And there was something else that I wanted to mention. And now I have forgotten. Boom. So we will pick it up next time, I guess. Love you guys. Amazing. Thank you guys. Peace and blessings. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Satori Prime. I did it. Thank you, dear one, for choosing to share a bit of your day with us. We value you greatly. And as a way to give back and help you to deepen these practices, we want to invite you to join our incredible community on Facebook. You can do so easily by going to joinoldsouls.com and ask for an invite. This is our private community where old souls and seekers are able to grow and share their journey with others. We hold exclusive weekly live streams, we answer your personal questions, and offer valuable insights that we won't be able to share here on the podcast. So again, just head to joinoldsouls.com and grab your invite today. And as always, if you enjoy this podcast, please head to iTunes and leave us a review. It's the only way other people can find this show. So if it's making a difference in your life, please share the love. Until we meet again, have an amazing week, dear one.